So we're here today to continue your work for your soil science project for 4-H. You've gone out to the field, you've collected some of your soil samples, and now I'm going to go through the process of testing your aggregate stability. Aggregates are particles of soil that are bound together. They, they look like little clumps in the soil. You can kind of think of them as cottage cheese. And what this test is going to do is to measure how strong those particles of soil are holding on together. And we're going to see that through the destructive force of water. We're going to take the soil aggregates, move them up and down through the strong forces of water, and find out how many of them are able to hold together throughout that process. The materials you'll need to do the soil aggregate stability test will include your two millimeter sieve. So this has the bigger holes along the bottom. You'll need a few of your 0.25 millimeter sieves, so a little bit finer. And along with this, you'll need a terry cloth to cover it and an elastic band to hold it in place. You will need a few terry cloths to help uh, wet your, your samples, as you'll see shortly. You're going to need the chamber, the apparatus, uh, plastic bin with your hair dryer. You will need your sodium hexametaphosphate to make your solution, a few buckets and a pan to collect your samples, a scale to take your measurements, and very important is distilled water. So in this situation, we don't recommend using tap water. It is important to go to the grocery store and get distilled water specifically. We'll jump into why shortly. So once you have assembled all of your materials, including some of your soil from the field, we'll get started on doing the test itself. To start with step one, we're going to use the two millimeter sieve, so your bigger sieve, and a bucket to collect the soil itself. We're going to take about a quarter cup of soil and push it gently through the sieve with our thumb. So you take your quarter cup measuring and try to get a representative sample uh, from your bag. Right there. And then you're going to put it through the sieve, making sure you're collecting it through. And you just use your thumb to push. Th you can shake it a little bit first to get the easy ones. And if there's any bigger clumps in there, you can just use your thumb to push through. And do that until all of the soil from that quarter cup sample has been pushed through. So once you finish that, we're done with the bigger sieve and you can set it aside. So the second step, you take your smaller sieve, the 0.25 millimeter sieve, and you put it on your scale and you record the weight on your data sheet. Then you want to take your sample that you had just put through the sieve and measure out about 10 grams into the smaller sieve. Okay. I got 11 grams, pretty close, we'll go with that. So now you fit, filled out col both column A and B on your sheet. So you have the weight of the sieve and you weigh, have the weight of the sieve plus the aggregates of your raw sample. So now we're on to step three. You've measured out your uh, soil aggregates and you have that with your, uh, the weight of the soil in them. And you can take your terry cloth and put it into one of your bins and use your distilled water to uh, in those bins so that there's just a little bit of water over, over top of the terry cloths. And next, you can, you're going to take your sample and you're going to set it onto the terry cloths themselves. The purpose of this is that you don't want to splash water over top of your sieve and disperse the aggregates too early. You want the water to so slowly seep up 
through the bottom and slowly wet your entire soil sample. Just press it down. And now you just wait until the whole sample is moistened. You'll notice the changing of the color. So put your sieve with your soil samples into your bin with distilled water, letting it soak up through that terry cloth and wet the whole sample about five minutes. And now we're ready to move on to step four. For step four, again, you're going to be look, using your distilled water and you're filling up a second bucket of just straight distilled water. And now we're going to take your sample and that's been wetted and we're slowly going to oscillate it up and down throughout the distilled water. This is the disruptive force that we were referring to. We're going to see how, by moving the water up and down in that water, how strong those aggregates actually are. So as you can see in your manual on step four, the, when you put the sieve into your distilled water, you want to make sure that there's enough water that it covers the whole sample and that when you're moving your sieve up and down about the distance of a centimeter, centimeter and a half, that it's always going to be submerged into that water. And we're going to do this with our sample with the goal of doing 30 oscillations per minute for a total of three minutes. So you're oscillating and you come to three minutes and you can pull out your sample and you're going to want to set your sample onto a dry terry cloth to soak up any of that excess water. Just like that. The next step is then to take this, take your sieves and you'll be able to do up to three samples at a time. And we're going to wrap the top with terry cloth, secure it with a rubber band and put it in the apparatus. So you've prepared all your samples, and you've covered them with terry cloth with your elastic band and you have them in the drying apparatus. You can go ahead and fit your hair dryer into the apparatus itself and turn it on to the lowest power setting and you're going to leave it on until the entire sample is dry. This can take anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes. Once your samples are dry, we are ready to move on to step six of weighing our aggregates. When you turn off your hair dryer, you might want to wait about five minutes just to let everything cool before you go on to this step. Once you're ready, you can remove the terry cloth and take out your air dried samples. So in this process, any loose soil that wasn't stable uh, and attached to those aggregates would have been removed from step one. And what you have now is the same weight of your sieve and just the weight of your soil stable aggregates. So you take your samples and you take your new weight and fill in column C, your weight of your sieve plus your dry aggregates. Now that we have the weight of our dry water stable aggregates in the sieve, 
we're ready to actually disperse those aggregates through the use of the sodium hexametaphosphate solution. When you think of aggregates, they're composed of not only the soil, the mineral matter, the clay content that you have in your soil, but also has organic matter mixed in there and a lot of different chemical compositions holding and binding those soil aggregates together. So what we're going to do now is use the sodium hexametaphosphate to break those bonds and disperse all the aggregates and so that all that we will be left with in the sieve are any particles that are larger than 0.275 millimeters which include some of some gra any rocks or gravel and, and your soil organic matter as well. To make your solution you're going to want to grab your sodium hexametaphosphate, an empty bin, and we can use tap water for this part of the process. And how it works out is that you'll use two tablespoons of your sodium hexametaphosphate for two liters of your tap water. So now that you have your solution ready to go, you can take your samples and put them into the solution and let them soak for at least five minutes. You can swish them around a little bit, but you don't need to completely submerge the sieve. You wanna make sure that the solution is moving in from underneath. While your sample is soaking in your solution, you can prepare a bucket of clean water to move your samples into once you're done with the soak. So it's been about five minutes and we've moved it up and down periodically, so we're ready to do that step. So we'll just take our samples and then move it into our clean water and we're gonna let it soak there for five minutes. When you're done this process, all that should be left in your sieve is just any sand particles, so those larger particles, and maybe a little bit of organic matter. And now that we have let it soak for five minutes, if there's still anything that's lurking around in there, you can dunk it into an, another bucket of water, but this one's looking pretty clean. And you'll go through the same process that you did after the first dunking of the water in the oscillations. So now that you have your sieve, you'll put it on a piece of dry terry cloth, soak up the extra water, not a bad extra step. And then we're gonna cover it with terry cloth, secure it, and put it into our drying apparatus to go through the same process of drying out, again, maybe about half an hour. We're now on to step eight, where you've taken your samples, which now are just sand and organic matter, and you've put them through the drying apparatus once you've turned off the hair dryer, it's a good idea to wait another five minutes or so just to let everything cool down. And then you can go ahead and remove your terry cloth covers, take your samples out, and it's time to weigh them. So again, going back to your worksheet, you'll record the weight of the sieve and the dry sand in column D. And with that, you're ready to do your appropriate calculations to get to your percentage of water-stable water aggregates in your samples. And with that, you have completed the, the aggregate stability tests. Well done. <music>